I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I am talking with Robin Weigert, who plays Nehuma on the uh, Hulu uh, limited series, We Were the Lucky Ones, which is in the middle of airing right now. Um, first question I wanted to ask you was, um, I read somewhere uh, that you are that you are Jewish yourself. And uh, I was wondering, you know, as someone who's Jewish, did you have any personal feelings, uh, uh, whether uh, positive or negative, about doing a project about the Holocaust? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I, I think this one is so rare uh, because, in fact, it's a story of family. It's a coming of age story. It has so many other, in other ingredients to it. Um, there is a powerful connection we all found both to one another and to the material that I don't know that any of us anticipated. And I've never been at a table where every actor playing a Jewish character was themselves Jewish. I, I don't know that anybody's thought that that would matter to a project or, or, or might give it a layer or a texture as it did with this one. And we got about a week uh, oh, maybe it was even two weeks of just being able to do table work. Um, and we were from such different places, all of us. Uh, about a third of the cast was from London, about a third from Tel Aviv, about a third from Los Angeles. Um, uh, and we were all different degrees of identifying in our lives as as Jewish Um what I mean to say is some went to synagogue regularly, some celebrated Christmas, um, <laughs> some uh, uh, just didn't have any any uh, religious identification at all. Um, some were ensconced in a lot of ritual throughout the course of the entire year, probably celebrated everything from Holy Tashli to uh, Passover. Um, and, and, but, what was striking is that as we talked about ourselves and our families and so on, as we had the luxury of being able to do at, around the table, we found so many unexpected things in common with each other uh, in spite of all these differences. Um, and uh, part of how the fabric of family came into being over the course of the, the, the table work was this repeated discovery of uh, commonalities amongst us. Um, it was a bit of a revelation to me. So when I first saw the script, before I had cracked it open, I wondered, is this going to be a story of a grim death march into the gas, gas chambers? I just didn't know what I was looking at. And as I began to leaf through it, I saw such buoyant life and specificity and love on the page, such a detail. Um, and that's where I fell in love with the project was, I, I have a, a, a passion about acting um, and a passion about writing that's good, partly because I think that the nature of love itself is that it's highly specific. <laughs> Hate is very general, and love is very specific. And I thought, okay, this this piece can be an act of love because it is so specific. Well, you know, speaking of you know an act of love and uh, love itself, um, uh, one of the things that I think resonates so much. Uh, in this uh, in this series is uh, the chemistry you have with your on screen husband, play, uh, Saul, played by I correct me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but uh, Leo Lior Ashkenazi. Yes. Uh, the, the two, uh, both of you are uh, are fantastic the way you play off each other, and it just you just make it seem like so natural. You make you makes your relationship seem so natural. What was he like to have as a scene partner? Oh, he's delightful. Um... He cracks jokes a lot, uh, which uh, nothing ever got too heavy um, in spite of the heaviness of the material and some of our scenes together. He <laughs> he made fun of me for saying this about him, but I 
fell in love with his hands, which were so thick and gentle and kind and um, little gestures. We were cold uh, and he took my hand between his and he rubbed it like you would a child's hand and blew on it. And um, it was so tender. Um, I loved the way he played with the little girl Artemisia who played Felicia when she was five or so. The two of them, what you see on screen is exactly as it was. He uh, he was such a charmer with her. There was a day when she was in the mood, I forget what it was, and she wasn't going to come out of her trailer. And the only person she would let come and convince her to come out of there was uh, was Lior. Um, there was a little bit of a mutual falling in love there between the two of them. And I just loved the 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 tender play he had with the, you know, each incarnation of the little one, the infant, and then and then her, and 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 then the older version of her as well. It was a like, um, such a kind man um and a kind of a confidence as an actor um his way of inhabiting his role uh gave me an aspect of nehuma i mean this is probably always true of acting but the the um he he so embodied patri the, the patriarch of the family in a good way. The word patriarch has gotten a stink on it, but um, he so held that role uh, at the Passover table. And there was a natural shift in me to, to the maternal or matriarchal role in relationship to the energy he was giving. Um, it, uh, there's a real balance between them as parents and as a couple, uh, a balance between them. Um, and it was wonderful to live inside of that um, and to think what must life be like with this kind of harmony and this kind of balance. So, so I'm, the... uh, I mean, expanding on that, um, uh, how did, uh, how do you find yourself gelling with the other cast members who are playing the Kirsch family? Uh, because uh, I mean, that it, it, you expand that, the, the, the chemistry between all of you uh, like like with Lior, it just felt so natural. What was it like to what, how what was it like to gel with them? There was some tremendous casting in this because I still feel about them. Well, they really are their characters, aren't they? They just uh, Henry feels like Ganek to me, and and you know Hadas feels like Mila, and Joey feels like Helena, and Amit feels. I, it just it's every one of them feels. Um, like their character to me in so many profound ways. And um, so it was given to us to to play characters that um, that I that that I think some genius in in the casting was that they understood we would find these points of of connection. It, it, casting is an amazing art form, you know, it really is. It's seeing into a person who they might, really secretly be inside such that they could bring that to the role. And in each case, I think there was something major that connected each actor to the part that they were given. Um, but we just delighted in each other. All I can say, Tommy um, set the stage for this by having us all go out to dinner together all, all the time at the beginning and a lot of hosted dinners just to get the ball rolling uh, at wonderful Romanian restaurants in Bucharest. And um, we all, seemed to develop a passion for tennis at the same time. And we were <laughs> going to these great clay courts they have all around um, and and playing each other. Um, Georgia would play and, and you, you know, it, it wasn't just the cast, it was whoever might be there with a passion for tennis. But, but uh, gosh, I hosted some poker games at my apartment and uh, taught a bunch of them how to play and we went to the Therma together, which is this amazing sort of water park in, in Romania. And we just did things and did things and did things and did things off, off screen. Um, and it was a many months long love affair among among all of us. It, it just, um, it's a time about which I'm very nostalgic, even though we, we uh, told a story of something very painful uh, in a sense. Um, you know, certainly the backdrop of what this family goes through is absolutely horrific. But um, 
where we invested our energy and our light and our life was in the love aspect of it. And I think that's why the series um, works as well as it does is, is, is the audience too is carried on the stream of that, of that good feeling we have about one another um, through all of these perilous things that happen and all of these tragic things that happen. Um, uh, I do have to ask um, what, what style of poker do you play? Oh, no, no limit hold'em. <laughs> no limit hold'em. You know, I, I, uh, um, I got, I caught the bug many years ago. I don't play all the time or anything. I actually seldom play anymore. I've started a games night here in Vancouver as well with my friend Diane Farr. Uh, we play, we play games. A bunch of shows that are shooting out here at the same time. We've been playing everything from sculptionary to just. Uh, and I think it's a wonderful way to to, to keep um, everybody together and keep things light, no matter what you're doing. But to have that be an aspect of making a series about the Holocaust was really something. Um, because I think um, had we gotten mired in sadness and um, all the things that were being stirred up for all of us, because most of us, if not every single one of us uh, in the cast, uh, if you go back a couple generations, there were people who died in the camps. You know, it's really it was pretty much a common theme for, for everyone, um, whether we knew those people or we didn't. As in George's case, I think there are people in my family that I never knew uh, and were never spoken of. But because of the journey that my father's father took, I'm I'm very certain that there would have been people connected to him that didn't make it out of um, Germany. Um, and my mother's father, uh, being a Polish Jewish, um, they they left well before they were in danger as a family, but the extended family that had stayed behind, again, people unnamed and unmentioned, it's just it, that 90% <laughs> were wiped out. There's no way it didn't touch. And then the emotional life of it touched my ancestors and so on. So and we all had this in common. So um, had we not had this buoyancy and this joy with each other, I think I think at any time we might have been swamped, you know, and, and at times we were and just turned to one another uh, um, because of this familial bond we all felt. Um, they had a kind of a um, service there for us in case we needed it, um, psychological support service in case we were triggered. Uh, I I think we did it for each other. We just did it for each other. Um, if somebody had had a lot stirred up in a day of shooting, you just talk to your friends. Um, and uh, we so we carried each other through that way too. And honestly, I think I think you can feel that as well watching the series. There's, there's a texture. It's like there's the series and then there's this texture sitting behind what you see um, of a kind of a, a net, a support, uh, a love that we all felt. Um, um, I hope anyway, but I, it's, it's interesting to think my experience of it from inside and whatever an audience experience of it could be different. And only you could tell me <laughs> as a, as a viewer who wasn't part of this extraordinary experience of making it, um, whether you did feel those things, I would hope you could feel those things. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, a lot of the things that you're just talking about, the way you were talking about, the, like the way you were getting to know each other and everything, I just, yeah. when I when I think about what it was like watching watching the series, I just go, oh yeah, no, that totally makes sense. You could, re you could read that. It was legible to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, that is the hope. Because uh, um, I, uh, I, I think that something made like this could do some good in the world, or at least that's my hope. I hope that's not too lofty a thing to say. I feel like it could do some good in the world for a thing to be made with so much love, just in and of itself. Um, so much love and specificity and care um, and kindness. <laughs> um, uh, so just one other thing I'm curious about is, I know there, there uh, it, it, it might be hard to single out one thing, but um, uh, what, scene was uh for you uh the most difficult to shoot whether that was professionally or, or on a personal level what's um what's interesting is i have two answers for that um 
And then that's the question of what do you make of the word difficult? <laughs> because um, maybe most confronting were actually scenes of joy because this woman that I played um, had done something so different with her life than I, the actress, have done. She made a beautiful family for herself, five incredible children that she poured heart and soul into. And I had a couple times, just in the beginning, after having fallen in love with the cast and standing in her shoes, looking across the table at my husband with my gorgeous children arrayed around me, where such a huge emotion came up in me that I couldn't, I couldn't even name, but I, but I, I thought, my God, this, this is a life. And my own felt a little pale by comparison. <laughs> my own, my real life felt like, where is this this is such a rich gorgeous life so that that um as beautiful as it was that brought up huge feelings in me and and then there was a scene where i kept having to recalibrate to play it with as much restraint as i felt the character might express i kept sort of exploding with emotion and we'd have to go back uh which was just the scene of the of the nazis coming to door and and saying you have half an hour to get out because I had it really right towards the beginning. Um, the the idea that all that I had invested that love and, and thought into of, of, of a home, of a family, and was just enthralled with what such a thing is for a person. I just, um, to be told, get out, half an hour. And Lior, with his gorgeous hands, he just... Uh, you know, it was written in as well, but just took my hand at the door. And every time he took my hand at the door before we opened it to see what was on the other side, I would just kind of um, erupt with uh, em emotion and we'd have to sort of start again. Um, because I thought that single gesture, whatever it is out there, <laughs> will <laughs> that we'll be facing it together. <laughs> whatever is on the other side of that door, we'll be facing it together was so huge for me um so you would think that the big scene would be right towards the end when she comes back and is in such a rage and it it, it is it is a great cathartic enormous scene to play of coming back and realizing this could never be her home again but really where it happened in me <laughs> was right at the beginning because i I had come to realize there's no greater thing that a person could do than be a parent, really. There's just nothing more that a, a greater that a person could do than be a parent. And feminism be damned. I was just like, my God, my God, what a thing to do with your life. Um, and then, you know, so soon after incarnating that, to have it taken away, it was just very big for me. <laughs> Well, uh, Robin, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I apologize for making you tear up. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, we do wish you all the best over the next couple of months. And to all of our viewers, please remember to like, share, subscribe to this video, and keep going to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions in advance of this year's nominations. Thanks so much, Robin. Thank you so much.